guys, Juan here, and welcome to another special edition of Coffee Talk. And today we have a special guest, uh, Mr. Bob Butler, Pastor Bob Butler, here with us. And he's got a great story to tell about how he got shot in the head, and he's still here. He's still alive. He's still living. So he's got a great story to tell. So, but uh, first, uh, yeah. are you drinking some coffee? With yes, us this so you can't do anything without coffee. Yes, uh, but first, yeah. coffee. Yes. That's what they Absolutely. always say, don't they? So I've got uh, my McDonald's here, and yeah. uh, normally I'm a Tim Hortons and Starbucks drinker. Sure. But um, today it's McDonald's. Well, that's great, and I have mine. I can't even pray in the morning uh, or have devotions before I have a cup of coffee. That first, then I talk to God. There you go. There you go. Good way to start yeah, the day, isn't it? Sure it sure is. All right, so Bob, uh, tell our audience here uh, about this story that happened many years ago, and uh, it's very captivating. It's uh, I remember when you had told me it before, I, it was just, it was like an unbelievable story that you were even yeah. still here with us today, but uh, yeah. God has had his hand all over Absolutely. It. Well, Juan, I really do enjoy telling the story, and I often say that if Hollywood wanted to script a story, they probably couldn't do anything more captivating than what happened to me that I had nothing to do with. And that's why I always title this little talk, To God Be the Glory, To God Be the Glory. One beautiful Friday afternoon, September 24th, 1982, one, I was in my church office and I had just finished typing the last sentence to my sermon. And so I wrote these words. Um, I know not what my future holds, but I know God holds my future, and I know he holds my hand. Period. Sermon done. Go home, play with the kids. Uh, just then, someone came into my office, a stranger, and I felt the first of three bullets that would enter my body and the first one was the only one I felt. That one took me to the floor like a freight train. He uh, actually shot two more bullets, one uh, in the abdomen area, and then Juan, when I fell forward, he put a third to the head. And so police... Oh, wait, so th it was a stranger? Yeah, he didn't, totally. He didn't know you or anything? He just yeah. come into the church... Bypass the secretary, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming, or right. Uh, no one was there. It was lunchtime. I was alone, and uh, I just had a split second to to see the face, and that's all I remember. The first bullet took me down. Now, wow. police estimate Juan that I probably bled on the floor for 45 minutes to an hour. I somehow managed to walk out of the office and somehow managed to get to the street not realizing that I was blind and I would be for three days. So at the roadside, I had a conscious moment, Juan, when I said, Dear God, something terrible has happened. I don't know what it is. I, I feel blood. I can't, I can't see it. But dear God, I think I'm dying. And, and I said, Juan, uh, I kind of panicked. I said, dear God, so if I'm dying, please don't forget the prayer I prayed when I was six years old in Birmingham, Michigan. Jesus, come into my, my heart. Please don't forget that prayer because I think, I think I'm dying. So Juan, the next thing that happened, I found myself in the front seat of a car driven by a 66-year-old Jewish lady uh, driving me presumably to the hospital. And I was conscious just a little bit to tell her my name, but here I am uh, bleeding. And when I got to the hospital, uh, they gave me eight pints of blood. I think, Juan, that the human body only can hold like 12. So I had lost a lot of blood. So two teams of doctors working on me. Uh, they had a CAT scan to the head to see where the bullet went. It actually entered the brain, stopped one centimeter, one, to the major cortex of the brain. And, um, and then they figured out where it was. 
and they drilled in and got the large piece. Uh, there were many fragments, but they got the main piece. So anyway, fast forward. Um, finally, by the grace of God, I lived the night, and I began to regain consciousness. And so in the bed, uh, there at the hospital, I said, Dear God, uh, I know this didn't take you by surprise, but there must be a reason why I'm here. So the police brought me in a photo spread. that I said, I don't know who it was. And they brought me in a photo spread of uh, pictures. And I, I said, it, it looks like this guy here. And they said, well, we've been trying to, to get him for a number of years. But anyway, two teams of doctors worked on me. I made it through the night and into the next week. My vision came back mostly, mostly. And when they finally uh, uh, let me go home, Juan, they said, well, we need to tell you, we couldn't save all of your brain. Uh, we had to discard, discard literally a teaspoonful of your brain, and so you won't have any long-term memory. You won't remember the Pledge of the Flag. And that was true for about a week, but I think God patched everything up. Wow. You know, the interesting thing, Juan, my uh, assistant pastor brought into the room the page that I was working on when the intruder came in, and he showed me the final words I don't know what the future holds, but I know God holds my future, and he holds my hand, and bloodstains were all over those last words. And so, what, what an amazing thing that, that I was alive. But uh, you know, Juan, God used this uh, uh, story. Uh, as I tell it, the story, I especially talk about the roadside prayer. And what I didn't pray, I didn't say, dear God, please save me, I have my wife, four kids, or the church needs me, and none of that. I just had one thing in mind. I, please don't forget, I hope you remember. And that was my prayer. And then I often say to the audience, can you folks perhaps cycle back to a time in your life when you made a, a prayer like that? Jesus, forgive me, come into my life. If you can't remember a time, this would be a good time to do it. Say, Jesus, please come into my heart, forgive my sins, and I'm going to live for you and uh, go to heaven someday. Wow. That's a wonderful story, Juan. It Thanks. is. Wow, that, that is amazing. It's amazing how God brought you through it, kept you alive, because he had a plan for you. He had a work for you to do still. And, um, and how old were you when this happened? I was 34. This 34. goes back to 1982. Wow. So I'm, I'm old. <laughs> this guy here is young. I'm old. Wow. But, so. uh, you know, we all have uh, a story, and we all have an opportunity to kind of weave in the message of why Jesus came and how he can say he's interested in our present life, but you know, eternity, folks, eternity is too long to be wrong. Too long to be wrong. So make that decision today. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sin. I want to go to heaven someday. Yeah, now, at the roadside, uh, you know, I didn't want to go to heaven just then. I said, I want to go to heaven, but not right now. <laughs> right. So, And this 66-year-old lady uh, took me to the hospital. Wow. Jewish lady. And finally, after 24 years of talking to her about Jesus, she said, well, we don't believe in Jesus. But after 24 years, she said, come, I'm ready to talk. And uh, Esther um, came to know Christ as the one who took away her sin. Wow, how about that? So thank you for an opportunity to tell that. It's, yeah, no, it's thank a tribute you. to God. Yeah, thank you for uh, telling the audience here. And uh, hopefully somebody got something out of this story. Um, it was very uh, captivating. And very, uh, it's not one that you hear every day. That's right. Uh, so it, it, was, it was very interesting, Bob. Thanks for um, being transparent and thank sharing you. this with yeah. our audience and the yeah. complete strangers. But um, yeah. yeah, I think that God was doing some amazing things in your life there. And not only there, uh, but you were able to. Uh, witness to another whole lady Absolutely, and yes. uh, she ended up giving her life to Christ so it's amazing the, yeah, the plan that had happened sure there. and to God be the glory and to that's God what we talk about be the glory yeah. Amen. well thank you Bob thank you Bob.
Those Thank of you guys you. Uh, that are God watching this, uh, thanks for watching this. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah. Maybe hit that bell icon so you get notified yeah. for future videos. And until the next coffee talk or any video, be creative. I'm sitting here